never gonna get, we're never gonna get more rain than this. So like now you might be thinking, MD, that's great, but why the hell are you laid on the floor? Come in. What's going on guys? Welcome back to MD Fish Tanks. I'm MD and these are my fish tanks. Oh, that's windy. Okay guys, so we've been sent some really cool stuff for the new paludarium for uh, Pancho to go in from Aquarium Gardens. All this stuff is from Aquarium Gardens. They're my channel sponsor, they look after me, they send me all this really cool stuff. So look, first of all, spiderwood branches, awesome for detail. We can use them to go across and just, just create bridges and things like that. That's great. And then, root wood. Again, more details, it's just gonna look really good to create little bits of details in between all the rocks. What else have we got here? What else have we got? Good packaging, by the way, guys. Well done at Aquarium Garden Day. Okay, so we've got the Hugo Kamishi. This is uh, Dexter Gravel. It's more coarser version of the stuff I usually use, so that's perfect. That'll give us more detail. And then we've got the substrate. This will be going in the tank, see, because it's a fine sand. This is great because Pancho can't have large gravel because she might swallow it because she's stupid. Okay, what else we got? Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that wind out there. There's like a storm coming and it's going nuts. Like, okay, well, when I say that, it stops, but trust me, it's on its way. God, this feels like Christmas. So yeah, loads of really nice pieces of black lava rock. This stuff's brilliant. It interlocks and grips itself really well so you can stack it up nicely, which is what we want to do in this skate that I'm going to be doing. So we've got 20 kilograms of it. Whoa, that's a heavy one. We've got loads to work with. Yep, so that's that in that one. And then the last one I would imagine is more yeah, yeah, loads more lava rock. So, yeah, we've got everything we need now to be able to build Pancho's new paladium. Click subscribe. That's not strictly true, guys. To be fair, I actually need, I'm still waiting for some volcanic um, sort of lava stone to go at the back and stack up behind, you know, just to fill the void there. That's coming from JBL. I think that's arriving Monday, so I'm probably gonna start doing escaping on Tuesday, that sort of time. Hopefully this video will be out by Thursday. If it's Thursday, happy Thursday. <laughs> anyway, so this it's not gonna look like this, obviously. I've just put the stuff in there to store it, so it's all ready and just, you know, build a collection. I like to do that. Before I build escape, I like to put everything that I've got, stack it all in the same area, just so you know where everything is. And it also, it builds the anticipation. It gets you excited. You can't wait for new things. Hello, guys. Yeah, you guys know last time, last video I told you about chocolate, chocolate passed away. Uh, but these guys are doing great, so again, I still have no clue what happened. Uh, yeah. So don't forget guys, if you are actually interested in getting one of these tanks for yourself, all you got to do is go to www.aquariumsforlife.com and just take a look at the pricing and everything there. They've got the email that you can send to them and that. They are so quality at the end of the day, like, look at that. I mean, ignore all my wires and Aquasaur, but look, double skinned, everything. Well worth going and have a look. Look, they'll build anything you want as well. Like, if this is 600 across with a 300 high little lip, but if you want to do 900 across with whatever you want, they can cut it to whatever you want. It's all made in the UK. It ships to the US if you want. That's a twin star light as well, if you're interested in that. And yeah, just, just go take a look guys. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the amount of quality aquarium you can get there for such a low price. But anyway, this tank, yeah, so I, I think I said to you before, what I'm gonna be hopefully doing is just stacking, I've got some more of this lava rock as well to go with this, so I'll have more. Plus I, it'll be uh, it'll be stacked neatly in the foreground and then sort of tapered backwards as it grows. And then I have all the, the lava rock um, 
you know the JBL volcanic lava rock to fill out the back behind it so that there's no void and you know place for Pancho to get stuck in that and excellent biological filtration from these stones as it is because the surface area in them is huge because they're so porous uh, anyway, yeah, so we're gonna stack it up in like a really cool sort of way, a valley down the middle, and then I can use all these sticks and that with mosses to create a bridge. And then we can just send the water to the top, let it trickle feed all the way down and just repeat that cycle. It's gonna be really cool. And then a really high contrasting foreground with this whitish sand. It's much more white than the usual stuff I use, but I think it's gonna go really well. The contrast of, you know, the white, it's not quite white, off-white, black lava rock, which is kind of looking gray without water in it, but it'd be fine. Black lava rock, the wood and the green, that's gonna look so good, isn't it guys? Come on, come on, let's do this. It's gonna, oh, I can't wait to start. It's one of those things that when you start getting the equipment and everything together, God, it's gonna be so good. All right guys, look, big special delivery. What is in the box? Right, let me get this into the studio and get it unpackaged. Okay, there we have it guys. Look, it was a Thermo line. Um, really good filters. The reason I've chosen these for, oh by the way, these are for all four of our new tanks from Aquariums for Life. So we've got sweet as, well, whoops. We've got sweet as filtration then. The reason these are so good is because they've got a little pre-filter area that you can just pop out and then clean whenever you want. It just keeps those, the water super clean where you can do that really easily, quite regularly. And also they've got built-in feeders. Feeders aren't a thing. They've got built, I can't talk today, I can't. It's not even early or late, so I've got no ex excuse really, but they've got built-in heaters, uh, no wires and all that. It's just gonna look awesome. So I've got 600, which would be for the, the big tank behind. Uh, I've got a 350, that's 250. I've got two 250s and a 350. So basically, yeah, we're kitted out filtration wise now. I just thought I'd grab my camera guys, cause there's a rare shot now of both the pee puffers are out. I'm just feeding them. There's a, there's a little tiny bit of blood worms at the top there. Yeah, I'll fix it in a minute, baby. I'm just looking at the pee puffers. But it's weird, like, they didn't see me put the food in, but they can sense very quickly that it's there. So what it tends to do is sit in this little area here, then it just starts breaking up, and then little bits float around the tank, and these guys tend to hunt it. There you go, look, he just got some. Or she, I'm not even sure. Uh, but there's also tons and tons of little snails in here. You can see, um, you can see none of them, but that's what these guys have been eating. They've been in there for months now and they're, you know, doing really well together. They must be a breeding pair or something. That's what people have said, because that's why they haven't killed each other yet. It sounds very ominous, but you know, they get along well. It's good. Now, even when there's food there, like now, they're not fighting over it. There seems to be some sort of pecking order that goes on, but yeah, it's quite interesting. There we go. It's all starting to break off now and it all start floating around the tank and then get their, their feed. Probably not with me sat here watching, to be fair. But yeah, let's leave them to it. You know what guys, I used to watch a lot of YouTube, um, this was before I was doing my own YouTube channel, and they used to watch like the gaming channels, uh, Mr. Beast, well everyone watches Mr. Beast, but you know what I mean, and you tend to notice, I used to read a lot of the comments there as well, the same as I do now, I reply to a lot of your stuff, but I noticed that in a lot of other communities there's a lot of negativity, a lot of like, you know, like bitching and that between people in the comments, and we don't really get that in our community, which is really nice, because I, st I still watch quite a lot of YouTube videos that are for like fish related stuff, it's just interesting to sort of get new ideas or see what other people are doing or just follow their progress and I, I really enjoy still doing that and I, I do that you know to anything that pops up notification wise I at least give it a, a good five ten minutes each video some of the videos like from Aquarium Cult go on for like an hour or something I mean I haven't got time to sit and watch that but I do still watch you know a portion of it just to see the general feel but it's really nice to see you guys that you know the majority of you all just just positive stuff real nice things you, you get the odd comment that's not great but that's to be expected you can't please everyone all the time and if you can well you know well done because <laughs> it seems to be impossible but as long as I think as long as you can be happy in what you're doing in life you don't really need to worry too much about what other people are thinking. It kind of goes for the good and the bad though. You can't just be like, oh, I'm really happy everyone's saying good things about me and then go, well, I don't care when they say bad. Like you kind of got to be indifferent to both, but it's nice to hear good things all the time. So thank you guys for all the support that you've been giving me. It's really appreciated. I think one of the things we can all agree on though is that we don't like algae. Actually, that's not true because, uh, you know, one of Rachel O'Leary's tanks, she's got like full on algae going on and it looks so good. Like. You couldn't make that if you tried so she's like yeah really fortunate i think she was worried recently as well about when she changed her lighting that it, it, it would go but it's still there so that's good but i've got some algae that i want to fix and i don't want to keep it so let's do that in the cave aquarium now so hopefully you can see 
there's a little bit of algae going on um where is it where is it there it is. you know like that waviness see that there right in the middle that's not good we don't want that and there's a bit on this christmas moss as well you know it's not out of control but we need to nip it in the bud now before it does get out of control what's the cause you're probably thinking well when i moved the cave into here i felt that it was so well established and settled that i actually turned i raised the lighting levels a little bit that was probably a mistake at the end of the day it was perfect i don't know why i decided to mess around with it <laughs> also we cut back a load of the, the biomass if you like in there from the plants which means that there's less demand at the moment for any free free nutrition that's in the water column or organics or anything so you know you're gonna get an, you're gonna get you change something basically you've changed something. when you change something you tend to get an unbalancing effect and that's what's happened so i'm going to put the lighting levels back down to where they were i'm going to siphon out this algae you know just stir up the substrate a little bit give it a little bit of a clean off on the top because right on the top of some of the surfaces here look we've got some little bits floating we need to just free that up and yeah let's get it back on track click subscribe Okay, so that's looking back on track, looking really good. But guess what? We got another package. And this one's a bit more technical, but you know, I like to share everything with you. So let's take a look. Oh, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Watch my fingers, I nearly sliced them open then. It is very boring. <laughs> no, it's not, there you go, look. Movo VXR10 shotgun mic so sound quality should be improved it's not too bad now but you know it can always be better a little bit of an investment why not it's not expensive so so opening it up we've got the dead cat which is cool that's what i'm worried about because i keep getting this sound when i'm talking so this will stop that um so yeah it's just uh, 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 uh come off there you go shotgun mic this is a little um Shock, shock absorber that you put on it as well so that it doesn't tap when it's like being moved around different leads this company isn't paying me by the way guys i'm just showing you because you might be interested but yeah this means i can film outside later a later date as well when i'm moving to doing more stuff like that people invite me places when i get friends maybe i mean i'm going to start using it next video though because i'm still waiting for an adapter to be able to actually use it on the uh gimbally thing that i'm using so another one so I went and got this like nice cheap little dehumidifier. Oh, <laughs> probably not working anymore, but I noticed a few beads of, of moisture coming down when it was really cold outside versus, you know, me putting some heat into the studio with the new big heater that we bought. So I just thought might as well get this. It's not gonna, oh, I don't know what that is. Proper ugly, <laughs> but I'll keep it hidden and uh, it can hold quite a bit of water. So yeah, it's just necessary. Why not, you know, for that price, why not get it spent a lot of money on this place i might as well just spend a little bit extra on sorting out the moisture okay guys the storm's officially hit like it's like proper hammering it down but to be fair this is the first like insane i'm never we're never gonna we're never gonna get more rain than this so like you know if there's any leaks gonna happen it's gonna happen today so far it's been raining for like hours there's not a drop of water in here, so we're all good so far. I'll come back in a minute with more footage when this is passed, because I can't even hear myself in here. MD, we don't care about this rubbish. Just show us some more fish tanks. Okay. If you guys remember a few weeks back, I think it was about three weeks ago. Uh, I don't even know. A few weeks back, we will set up this little nano tank for my shrimp. It's overgrown. He's trimming right back. It might look quite bare when it's done, but it's going to grow back even better. And there's some, like, horrible sort of nuisance algae type Fred algae. I don't even know what it is. It's like staghorn or something, I don't know. But anyway, the, it's about the only thing that shrimp don't eat. So I'm gonna trim that straight off, suck it up, get all these background plants, just trim nice and short again, top up the water, get it clean, get it looking good. Right, that's that done with it's gonna look a little bit rough for a few weeks but i promise you well i hope so anyway it's gonna come back looking much better than before look i quite like it now it's a lot more open i can actually see the shrimp as well where's my no they're gone i'm just wondering where my there they are there's one come on here where are you there he is the crystal i've got to get i've got two in here i've got to get a lot more of these crystals i love them i think they're great but to be fair look at this beautiful cherry as well eat that algae my friend 
Eat it, all of you. Eat the algae now. So a question I get asked quite a lot is like, how did I get into the hobby? Now this ties in quite nicely to uh, the new turtle tank that we're going to be doing. So originally I had turtles for like nine years in uh, the discus community tank that you can see. Well, actually originally they were in a much smaller tank. But as they grew, obviously I got a bigger, I did the responsible thing, a lot bigger aquarium and whatnot. A few people expressed some concerns of, you know, needing to research before getting reptiles, i.e. turtles. After nine years, you kind of know what you're doing. Not to say I'm an expert on this musk turtle in particular, but you know, I know how to keep them alive. Oh, message. I know how to keep them alive. You guys know I film on my phone, so uh, I know how to keep them alive, but I will do more research anyway, because it's been a while since I kept them, and just to make sure, really. But overall, like, as long as you can keep your water pretty decent, they're, they're dirty turtles, they poo a lot. So as long as you can keep your water good, though, you're all right. They feed in their water, you see, so they, they en engulf water. To, uh, to bring their food down. And that's why it's important to have clean water and stop them getting like diseases or anything. But we're all gonna be good in that. I'll make sure that that is all absolutely fine. So don't worry about that. Now you might be thinking, MD, that's great. But why the hell are you laid on the floor? The reason for that guys is to add dramatic effect from scene changes. So if you haven't subscribed already guys, then you need to do it now. Go down and click subscribe. Next episode, we're gonna build on this awesome aquatorium for my axolot of pancha, pancha. I've got something really cool planned. I think it's gonna turn out awesome. Put it this way, overhanging waterfall. There's the clue. So make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you for the next video.